Hi everyone. Today we are talking about coarse fragments in the soil, such as rocks, gravel, concretions, whatever it may be. Knowledge of the type and the amount of coarse fragments present and the depth to and the thickness of a layer in which they occur is very important for soil productivity, land use planning and management. And that applies equally to dry land farming and irrigated agriculture. It is therefore very important to accurately delineate such areas on soil maps. But in order to do that, you have to dig soil pits because whatever you're looking for on the surface, remember, <laughs> the answer is always below your feet. Let me show you one practical example. And this is where fun begins. <laughs> the investor was saying that they did everything by the books. They choose the best seeds, the best fertilizers, they made sure that they irrigate according to specifications, but their crops, namely wheat and alpha alpha, continuously were failing. <laughs> and on the other hand, irrigation supplier said, no, 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 that's not our fault. We follow your maps religiously. Layout is done exactly according to different soil types, as these maps are showing. We are applying 15 millimeters of water per evolution per day, which is very easy to check. It's not our fault. <laughs> and then the court engaged me as an independent witness expert, you know, to see which one is right, which one is wrong. And so the first step I requested was to hand over to me the soil maps and the reports, including a irrigation layout. And tomorrow morning, I replied to court saying, sorry, gentlemen, but I can't help you because these maps and the report contain no soil information below the surface. I can't comment information that doesn't exist. So what now? Now we have to dig a soil pits in a particular pattern in a both better growing areas and the bad growing areas to find out what's causing those differences that we see on the surface. Guess what? That's what I found. That's what they saw themselves. Gravel, rock, gravel, few pans and things like that. None of which was recorded by remote sensing devices. None. And I told them, gentlemen, for me to do a job for you, I must first have a coordinates of your lane so that I know geographically where I am. Then I can put the grid pattern of fishnet of my pits where they should be dug. But on that lane could be houses, could be lakes, could be trees, could be railway lines, whatever. We are not going to dig there, so I can remove my pits just a little bit. That's where remote sensing surface images are extremely useful and I use them all the time, such as that Google image or your browser or Sentinel or whatever. But they tell you nothing <laughs> what is below the surface and to remind you, soil starts from the surface down, not up. And then the investor asked, what should we do? We've done less than 800 hectares. We have more than 60,000 hectares extra for development, for investment. What now? Wait, what, what, how? It's very simple. Let's cover your land with the grid pattern, with the pits. Dig, 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 dig. Observe, measure, analyze. Talk to your soils. They will tell you much more than you can comprehend. If you pay attention to those dots, they represent soil pits with, that we examine, that I examine. Each one of them has their coordinates. You can always locate it after winter. Now, each one of those pits or these uh, 
examined side has the oven health chart. Not only what you see above the surface, but the most importantly, what you see and the measure below the surface. Starting with the depth and thickness of every single layer, horizon shapes, etc. The texture of each layer, the structure, the coarse fragments that we're talking about, engineering properties, plasticity, and so on and so on. None of which can possibly current remote sensing technology measure. That's why they couldn't show it. That's why they lost their court case like this. Once when you have a coordinates and you have that hail chart completed, just remember that it doesn't matter who will later on re-examine the land or for some different uses for whatever purposes, that layers in this particular case, that gravel will not go 5 miles that way or 10 miles that way, will not turn into the clay or sand alone. No, 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 will be still there. You can always use it and use it for whatever purposes without the need to dig again. No, you've done it, you have it once and forever. And now let me show you some numbers that will help you to understand the importance of inaccurate versus accurate soil information. What does that mean to investor, to developer, to someone who is buying, selling land, to the most ordinary producer, to the grower, to the farmer, to everyone else, to the land user of any kind? Conclusions. Projects like these are very expensive and they are done only once, right or wrong. You, therefore, have only one chance to get it right or get it wrong. To avoid terrible headaches, financial losses, projects failure, and unwanted publicity, you better go out there, dig, 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 observe, measure, analyze, talk to your soil, ask the questions, and your soil will tell you much more than you can comprehend. You will get the right answers. Use them wisely. For new developments, you need those answers before pre-designing and pre-investing stage. In existing enterprises, where you already know where good and bad ugly areas are, go out there and make sure that you check them thoroughly. Don't presume because you see the symptoms are the same on the surface that the problems below the surface are the same. No, they can be vastly different. So therefore, if you use wrong strategies, you can make your soul worse than it was before remediation. Don't. Check it thoroughly. Check all areas. Once when you know what you're dealing with, you can easily turn your failure into success. Just like this.